Thanks again. Uh, it's good to see a few familiar faces in the audience as well. Um, so today I'll be talking about uh, fair value accounting and financial crises. Just to give you an overview about my research, uh, most of my research focuses on uh, financial institutions and uh, uh, accounting for financial institutions. A part of that is related to uh, fair value accounting. So the things that I'll be talking about today, uh, they're based on two of my papers. The first one is titled, Does Fair Value Accounting Contribute to Systemic Risk in the Banking Industry? And the second one is an, uh, is an event study that is co-authored with Professor Bob Bowen at the uh, University of uh, Washington. So what I'll be talking about is, uh, does fair value accounting actually play a role in uh, financial crises or not? And if you're following uh, popular press about a year back, you would have heard like a lot of things were actually blamed for causing the financial crisis or making the financial crisis worse. And uh, fair value accounting happened to be uh, one of those things. So before I jump into uh, what role fair value accounting actually plays in financial crisis, I just want to talk about what uh, fair value accounting is. So what is fair value accounting? A lot of people um, have this impression or think of fair value accounting as uh, market prices. But uh, FASB actually defines uh, fair value as the price uh, that would be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between uh, market participants at the measurement date. So it's actually an exit price notion, and there's some important terms over here. So you know, it should be an orderly transaction between uh, market participants. So the word orderly becomes important. So it's not always the market price. Fair value can be different from the market price. And what FASB did was, uh, FASB is again the Financial Accounting Standards Board, the, the body that writes the accounting rules, uh, uh, the US GAAP rules. They put down this three level uh, fair value hierarchy. And they said that when possible, you should use level one fair values. If level one fair values are not available, use level two. If not level two, then level three. So what are level one? Level one is essentially quoted prices for identical assets and liabilities in your um, active market. So you can think of these as market prices. That's what a level one fair value is. However, there are some assets for which you actually might not have level one fair value. So what you do is you go down the hierarchy you find level two fair values. What level two fair values essentially are, these are fair values which are based on market observables. What that means is um, you might not have an active market for an identical asset, but you might have an active market for a similar asset. So you take the price of that asset, you adjust it, and you come up with a fair value uh, for that asset or liability. And finally, level three, you know, a lot of stuff has been said about level three. This is what marking to model, or what some people will call marking to myth is. In this case, you don't have an active market for a similar asset. Um, so what you do is firms actually use their own valuation models, and they do not use market inputs to come up with the fair values for. So this is what fair value is. And you know, FASB, or why, why should the standard setters want to use fair value? So there are you know, pros and cons of it, but what FASB has come out and said is that their long-term objective is to use fair value to report all financial instruments. So instead of using historical cost accounting or amortized cost accounting for financial instruments, what they want is, in the long run, they want all financial instruments to be reported at fair value. And the reason for that is they believe, the standard setters and most of the uh, supporters or proponents of uh, fair value believe that fair values provide the most timely and relevant information to use of the financial statements. So what that helps them do is, is basically exercise market discipline compared to using historical cost accounting or amortized cost accounting. So that's why this big push towards uh, using more and more fair values in financial reporting. And over the years, uh, you know, the fair value, fair value became really popular. A lot of people started talking about it in the recent financial crisis, but this is not something new. Fair value has been around for years. You know, one of the first standards that required firms to use fair value goes as back as actually in 1980s. It was right after the savings and loans uh, crisis that the financial reporting moved towards a more uh, fair value oriented uh, team. So what I've done here is I'm trying to show to what extent fair values are actually used uh, in financial reporting. So if you see, in the early 80s, what I have here is I have uh, all the assets and liabilities of bank holding companies, of US bank holding companies, which are reported 
at fair value. So they're either recognized or disclosed at fair value, scaled by the total assets of the banking sector. So you can think of, as the entire banking sector, what proportion of their assets are actually uh, reported at fair value. So if you see, consistent with uh, uh, FASB's objective, the use of fair values has increased over time. So back in the 80s, there wasn't that much fair value. FAS 115 came out right there. That was an accounting standard which required firms to disclose their health to maturity, uh, available for sale and trading securities. And you know, over the years, different standards came out. Around Right around 1994, you had FAS 119 where firms had to disclose the fair value of their derivative positions. And over the years, the use of fair value has actually increase. So this is consistent with what uh, FASB wants to do. And they believe that at some point in time, all financial instruments, which essentially forms the balance sheets for almost all banks, you know, majority of the balance sheets for most banks, they should be reported at uh, fair value. So you know, that's a little about fair value before we jump into its fair value's role in the financial crisis. So what's the problem with using fair value in financial crisis? So right around 2008, uh, you know, when the financial crisis was probably at its worst, a lot of different things were blamed for causing the financial crisis. And accounting happened to be one of those. So the critics of fair value accounting believe that the way we account for assets under a fair value based reporting regime can actually make contagion worse and cause a systemic crisis. So it can actually risk the failure of the entire banking sector. And how IMF came out and said that you know, certain investment decisions which are based on fair value accounting could actually lead to these forced sales, which cause the prices to fall further and increase the risk to the en entire banking sector. And this will happen when fair value accounting interacts with certain other thresholds, which could be self-imposed by the firms or might be required by the regulators. So you know, that was a big criticism of uh, fair value accounting. Testimony of Bill Isaac, this was kind of interesting. So Bill Isaac uh, was FDIC's uh, chairman between uh, 1978 to 85. So that was around when the savings and loan crisis was going on, and that's when the push towards fair value accounting started <laughs> off. He actually came out and said um, in his testimony in front of the Congress that fair value accounting, he believes that fair value accounting actually caused uh, the subprime crisis. You know, he was probably one of the he was probably most critical of fair value. Not everyone believes that fair value accounting caused the financial crisis, but there are people who do believe that it might have a role to play in the financial crisis. So what I do is, in my two papers, I try to examine, OK, does fair value accounting actually play a role in financial crisis? So to give you a little more insight how fair value accounting can actually interact with certain thresholds and uh, you know, exacerbate contagion is, so think about this. There's a financial crisis going on. Um, and there's an event or a shock that happens that depresses the value of the assets that these banks are holding. And these, this fall in value of the assets can actually cause the banks to uh, dispose some of these assets because of their regulatory constraints that they have. So banks have to maintain certain regulatory ratio. Following a shock when the value of their assets decreases, they might be forced to sell these assets. During a crisis, when a bank comes in and sells additional assets, there might be pressure on short-run prices, which causes a further fall in the prices of these assets. Under a fair value regime, under a fair value based reporting regime, other banks will have to mark their assets to the, either the market value or the fair value of these assets. So what this can cause is other banks which were initially not violating their ratios based on the initial shock, now because of the action of other banks, might be forced to sell their assets. And this causes the spiral of falling prices and the feedback effect, or what is referred to as the feedback loop of uh, fair value accounting. So essentially what happens is that fair value accounting can interact with these externally imposed regulatory ratios and may create a circle or this feedback loop of falling prices that increases the systemic risk in the banking industry. So that's just one way of it. You know, there's another way um, Carl, uh, Allen and Carletti in their paper talk about that during financial crisis, asset prices do not really reflect fundamental value. What they reflect is the amount of liquidity that's available in the market. So when there's lower liquidity, the fair value of these assets drop. Again, these banks are marking their assets uh, to a lower value because of which the regulators might shut down banks because they believe these banks are insolvent. And again, under a fair value oriented regime, these banks might be forced to sell their assets. 
which other banks, it has implications for other banks which are holding very, very similar assets, and it can cr create this artificial and excessive volatility compared to a reporting regime that, let's say, based on um, historical cost accounting. Under historical case cost accounting, banks would not face the same incentives, they would not face the same, um, they would not be in the same position, so they will not have to dispose their assets to avoid uh, um, uh, violating these uh, fundamental ratios, these regulatory ratios. And you can have the same effect if you have certain debt contracts which are based on fair value numbers or compensation contracts which are based on that. Uh, you can, managers will be faced with similar incentives to dispose their assets when there's a decrease in the market price or the fair value of their assets. So what I do is, you know, based on these uh, prior papers, I, in my first paper, uh, where I'm examining the role of fair value accounting in, uh, on systemic risk, what I do is I look at uh, four different questions. The first two are, are more of a, at the industry level. I'm saying, okay, is the extent of, to which we use fair value reporting related to systemic risk in the banking sector? And is this association, do we only see this association when markets are illiquid? Because if the markets are liquid and they can actually absorb these additional sales of assets without having a significant impact on prices, then you should not actually see this interaction between fair value accounting and some of these externally imposed uh, um, ratios. And then I do two additional cross-sectional tests where I'm seeing which are the banks which are more likely to be affected by it. Is it the banks which are poorly capitalized or is it the banks uh, which have more fair value assets? So what I do to do this is I use um, all, essentially all bank holding companies with available data in the US between 1988 to 2007, and I end up with a sample of about 793 unique bank holding companies with about 100,000 observations in this. So how do I test this association between fair value accounting and uh, bank contagion is? So what I do is I, I estimate this logit uh, model where my dependent variable is extreme next. So this is uh, a dummy variable which is coded one zero, it's coded one when the returns for a bank are in the lowest decile in its uh, time series of return. So over 1998 to 2007, this variable is coded one when that bank has returns in the lowest decile of its time series. My D bank rate is an index of money center banks and this is again a dummy variable that's examining that okay, uh, it's coded one when the returns for this index are in the lowest quartile of its time series of returns. So over the prior, prior 20 years, what is the likelihood um, when the returns for this index are in, this, in the lowest quartile, this is coded as one. And what I'm trying to do is to test for systemic risk is I'm seeing has contagion within banks increased as the reporting system has become more fair value oriented. What I mean by contagion is in a way the spread of poor performance from one bank to the other and how this model is testing that is it's testing, okay, when you have these money center banks, the biggest banks in the economy, when they're doing poorly, is it more likely that other banks in the economy are also doing worse at the same time? So that's essentially what contagion is, and that should be captured by beta two, but the impact of fair value accounting on contagion should be captured by this, basically this interaction. So additional contagion that is introduced by fair value accounting or you know, the fact that fair value accounting might be making contagion, uh, might be exacerbating contagion, is essentially, uh, this should be captured by this coefficient uh, beta four over here. And how I'm capturing the extent of fair value accounting as I've talked before is by this variable F E all, it is a ratio of assets and liabilities that are reported at fair value scaled by the total assets in the banking sector. <coughs> So I estimate this model, and what I find is, uh, if you see that, yes, uh, you know, I find some evidence of contagion in the banking industry, which is nothing new. Prior papers have found it, the way the banking industry is set up, the characters of banking make it, uh, you know, contagion is a part of it. So I do find that there's positive contagion when the money center banks are doing poorly. It is more likely that other banks in the economy would also be doing poorly. However, as the reporting system has become more fair value oriented, I find that there's an increase in this contagion. So there's some initial evidence suggesting that, yes, fair value accounting does exacerbate contagion. The next step, which I find actually is more interesting, is that I see, okay, you know, for this channel of, for this new channel of contagion through fair value accounting to exist, it has to be the case that it's only during when the markets are illiquid that we find an increase in contagion. Because if markets are liquid and they can absorb these additional sales, they should not be that much short-run pressure on prices. 
So when I do that, I introduce a proxy for illiquidity over here. So now my variable of interest becomes the interaction on the contagion, you know, the debankret, uh, illiquidity, and fair value uh, all. What I find is that when markets are not illiquid, I do not find uh, any evidence of increase in contagion. So that's my coefficient on the interaction of debankret and FV all. But however, when markets are illiquid, I do find that there is this increase in contagion and fair value especially contributes to financial crisis when markets are illiquid. I also find you know, some result with respect to my cross-sectional hypothesis. I don't have the time to talk about it, so I'll just tell you, uh, to show you, I'll just tell you that in the cross-section, the banks that were m more likely to be affected by this increase in contagion are the ones that uh, are poorly capitalized or the ones which have more fair value assets and liabilities on their books. So a little about my other paper, what I do in this. So you know, in my first paper, we just talk about the costs that are associated with uh, fair value accounting. Yes, it increases in contagion. Fine, that's a cost associated with fair value accounting. But is it the case, are there some benefits that could be there with having a fair value based reporting system? Because the standard setters truly believe that it provides you more timely and relevant information that the users of financial statements uh, find more useful. So what I do in this paper is we do an event study around 10 events. So right after the, uh, the emergent, you know, the financial crisis, President Bush signed the bailout package or the emergency, sorry, EE. SA Stabilization Act, something, Emergency Economic Stabilization Act in 2008, it actually gave the right to SEC to actually come in and uh, change the rules for uh, fair value accounting and actually suspend fair value accounting because they believe that fair value accounting was actually destroying value. So what we do is we do an event study and we examine, okay, what do equity <coughs> investors believe? Do they really believe that fair value accounting, the costs associated with fair value accounting far outweigh the benefits associated with that? And um, you know, if that was the case around events which increase the probability of fair value accounting being uh, suspended, we should find positive returns to the bank holding companies. Otherwise, we should find negative uh, returns. So again, this is a very quick summary of the paper. We do a lot. Of, I do. A, we do a lot of, you know, tests around it. But what we find around those events, which basically lasted from August of 2008 to about April, when the rules were actually changed. So at the end, FASB gave in and did relax the fair value rules. We find that events which increase the probability of fair value accounting rules being suspended or relaxed, the market reacted as if the costs associated with them far outweighed the benefits. So we found positive returns around those events. And the events which actually reduced that probability, there were negative events uh, around that. So to summarize, you know, does fair value accounting have a role in financial uh, crises? It does seem that there's an association between a more fair value oriented reporting regime and increase in bank contagion, especially during periods of uh, market illiquidity. In the cross section, the banks which are more likely to be affected by this increase in contagion or increase in um, uh, systemic risk are the ones which are themselves more fair value oriented and are poorly capitalized. And finally, during the financial crisis, it did seem that investors believe that uh, the negative effects of uh, then existing fair value accounting and impairment rules far outweigh the benefits of having more timely and relevant information that you can get through uh, fair value accounting. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you. <laughs>